Today, we're looking at five bass pedals you must own. So exactly what is it that makes a bass pedal fall into the must own category? Well, pedal number one on this list is a good example because it's a pedal you can use on literally every gig and that is a compressor. So I'm using the Atlas by Source Audio here, but really you can use whatever compressor you like. And a reason a good compressor is so useful is that you can use it to get everything from a really aggressive punchy slap tone. To using it in recordings, on tours, on small club gigs, just to smooth out your sound a little bit in a really subtle way. But not every pedal on this list is subtle and pedal number two is a great example. So pedal number two is an octave pedal. So right now I'm using the MXR Vintage Bass Octave, but I've also used the Micropog before and had great experiences with that. I've actually reviewed it before on this channel. And the great thing about octave pedals are if you play four string, it allows you to get the extended range of a five string. But the other thing they're great for is actually faking a synth bass tone. More and more gigs require this sort of sound now and if you don't want to splash out on a really expensive synth rig or you don't actually play keyboard bass this can be a great alternative. Now number three on this list is actually two pedals in one and that is both a tuner and a volume pedal. The tuner sort of goes without saying really obviously it's great to have an electronic device to keep yourself in tune however volume pedals it's a little bit more complicated. As you can see here I've gone for the Jim Dunlop XL pedal and the reason I really like this pedal is because you've got multiple outputs here so you can run it just as a straight volume pedal but what I love about this is it's also got a dedicated tuner out if you want to use it and you can also wire this up as an expression pedal to work with other effects too. Now pedal number four weirdly enough is actually not a pedal but the reason I've included it is because if you are going to have pedals one thing you don't want to get is electrical buzz and hum from a bad mains power supply in a venue in a studio or in a gig so what you need to ensure you never have that is your own power supply that you can mount underneath your pedal board or just bring with you as a separate unit. Unit. And speaking from my own experience, the sad reality of gig venues is you can't always trust the quality and cleanliness of their power. And the other thing you can't trust at gig venues, and that is number five on our list, and that is some kind of preamp or DI. This one's a little bit complicated. In a perfect world, my preference would be to bring one of my own DIs. So something like the Jewel Monique Dove Cage, something like the A Designs Ready. But the trouble is, it's just not always possible to travel with them. So that's why I have a few alternatives. One is this small tree. DI. It's made by Audio Kitchen. I used it on the Bat Out of Hell UK and World Tour, so it's been all the way to Australia and back, did a fantastic job. Very small, very easy to mount on a pedal board. But the other option you could go down is the digital route. So I've done this here with the Quad Cortex. This allows me to capture digital impressions of DIs, of pedals, and of amps. So no matter where I'm going, I can always take my favorite DIs, amps. But this does raise a really interesting question. Does this mean that there's no point in having a bass amp anymore? That's a question for another video, and if you want to watch it click up here let me know what you think of these pedals and if i've missed anything like comment subscribe and i'll see you again in the next lesson take care